Hey guys, I look awful today, so I'm not going to be on camera long, but I wanted to say hi on this rainy Thursday. Today, I want to show you how to solve some uh, equations with trig functions in them, and uh, they're unique because they have more than one answer, and so that'll be uh, the newest thing to look at today. Uh, why don't we get started? So, quick review. Uh, before we get into solving some equations, uh, some important thinking we'll need to do is to remember um, that uh, when we defined our trig functions based on the unit circle, we were thinking about um, sines as heights of angles and cosines as widths of angles. And so we'll definitely need to uh, think that way again. Uh, also, occasionally, we'll have a tangent problem. When we think about tangents, uh, those are the slopes of these angles. All right, here's a question. It says, solve the equation and find both angles between 0 and 360 degrees. And so this is saying um, sine of x is 0 0.25. What angles give us sines of 0.25? And so uh, let me think about this a moment. This is a sine problem, and so it's a height. And so I'm trying to find some angles where I've got positive heights. And so heights are positive in quadrants one and in two. So let me uh, let me draw a little picture here. So don't know that this angle is exactly right, but this angle certainly would have a positive height. And there's also another angle over here in quadrant two that would have a positive height. And so that's what my answer is going to look like: some angle over here and some angle over here. Now. To actually get uh, an answer, we need to type this into a calculator, kind of. And the way you'll need to do this is to undo sign. You have to type second sign. So on the calculators, second and sign. Notice above it, it says uh, sign with a little negative one in there. That's what it's going to look like on your calculator, too. So when I did this earlier, uh, second sign of 0.25 gave me 14.47. That's this angle here in quadrant one. The calculator only gives you one of the answers. You're going to need to reason out what the other answer is. In this case, um, I already did the thinking that it's in quadrant two. And so to find what this angle is, you need to think about reference angles again. So if this is 14 degrees, then this guy is 14 degrees short of 180. And so to find the second angle, I need to subtract 180 minus 14. That gives us about 166 degrees. And so the two answers here between 0 and 360 are 14 and 166. Here's another problem. This time it says cosine is uh, equal to negative 0.83. Here, instead of the letter x, they use the variable theta. Not a big deal. It's still talking about angles. I'm looking for two angles uh, that give me cosines of negative 0.83. And so cosines, remember, those are widths. And so I need to think about uh, when are widths negative. So here is a picture. Uh, this would give me a negative x-coordinate, a negative width. And uh, so that's in quadrant 2. The other angle that would give me, uh, the other quadrant that would give me a negative width would be down here in quadrant three. And so the two angles I'm looking for are a quadrant two angle and a quadrant three angle. My calculator is not going to give me both of them. It probably is going to give me the quadrant two angle. Uh, let's see what it does. Again, we'll type in second cosine to bring up this cosine negative one. And then I'll type the value, negative 0.83, and I get 146.09. By the way, if you typed this in and you got like a 2 point something or 3 point something number, then you are in radian mode instead of degrees. Easy enough to switch. Just press mode and swap over into degrees. Um, so 146, that would be this quadrant 2 angle. So that's one of our answers. To find the other, we need to think about what this reference angle is. The reference angle is this tiny sliver short of 180. And so uh, the reference angle is 180 minus 146, or 34 degrees. And then once I know that reference angle is 34, I can add that to 180 to get this angle down here that has um, 
the same cosine value. And so our second answer here, the angle in quadrant three, is 214. So final answers here, 146 and 214. Here's a tangent problem. So tangents are slopes. And so I'm going to be looking for slopes that give me negative uh, values, especially this is a negative steep value. So um, very steep slope. Uh, slopes are negative when you're in quadrant two and quadrant four. And so here's a, a picture of it, right? Here's a negative slope. I actually drew it very steep on purpose because nine is a, a steep slope. And so that's obviously in quadrant four. The other angle that would give me a negative slope would be over here in quadrant two. And so uh, the calculator again will give us one of those and we're gonna have to reason out via reference angle thinking uh, what the other answer is. When I type this into my calculator, second tangent of negative 0.945, I got negative 83.96, which I'm gonna call negative 84. So that's the first thing it gave me. That's definitely a quadrant four angle. Now the instructions said that we needed to solve this for the angles between zero and 360. Negative 84, well, it's an acceptable way to describe this angle. It doesn't fit with this requirement. It's not between zero and 360. And so I need to think about how can I describe that uh, as an angle um, that's more than 270 and less than 360. And that's not hard to do. You simply add 360s to it, right? Every time you add a full circle, you get another version of that, a coterminal angle of that. And so if I add 360 to this, I get 276. And that makes sense, just more than 270 degrees. That's this angle right here. Now, I still need to think about what quadrant two angle is. And so to do that, I need to consider what this reference angle is. This reference angle is 84 degrees. And then I can subtract that from 180 to get what this is. I would expect something, you know, just past 90. Uh, 180 minus 84 gives me 96 degrees. So final answer when we're all done here is going to be these two angles. So 96 degrees and 276 degrees. One last problem. Um, this is involving the reciprocal functions. So this says cosecant of x equals. Now, you can't type second cosecant. There's no cosecant button on here. You can only do sines or cosines or tangents. And so if you want to solve this problem, you actually have to solve a different problem. Uh, what you should do is take the reciprocal of both sides. So cosecant is sines reciprocal. That's a fact that uh, you should start to commit to memory. Cosecant is sines reciprocal and secant is cosines and cotangent is tangents. And so um, if I take the reciprocal of cosecant, that would become sine. And if I take the reciprocal of 4.389, that's 1 over 4.389. And when I typed that into my calculator earlier, I got 0.22784. And so I rounded it here. Now, to continue, um, now it's a sine problem. And we've think, thought about sine problems before. If you want, you could pause the video and see if you could find the angles yourself, or in a moment, I'll do it too. So signs are heights, and so I'm looking for a positive height. Uh, positive heights happen in quadrants one and two. So here is a picture. Here's the angle that I'm probably going to see, um, and uh, the other angle I'm going to have to find is this one that's symmetrical to it um, over in quadrant two. To uh, finish the problem, uh, if you type second sine of second answer, or if you actually type second sine of 0 0.22784 and so forth, you'll get 13.17 degrees. I'm going to round that to 13. That's definitely this angle in quadrant one. And uh, 13 is the reference angle. I need to subtract that from 180 to get this answer over here. 
And so that would be about 167 degrees. So final answers, 13 degrees and 167. So those are some of the basic ideas in solving trig equations. We'll get some more complicated ones um, later on, so catch the next video for that. But uh, for now, see if you can find both of these angles. As always, let me know if there's something I can do to help, and uh, have a wonderful rainy Thursday.